Yeah, here we go. Okay, no problem. So uh, for the benefit of those that will be following uh, the discussion on YouTube, uh, this is the R for Data Science Online Learning Community. And we are reading through the Tidy Modeling book. And today I'll be discussing on uh, chapter 11 of the book, which is about uh, comparing models with resampling. Uh, this chapter is just uh, like a, a follow-up uh, to our discussion in which uh, we have uh, for last week. So for, for the learning objective uh, for this chapter, I said uh, we are going to calculate performance statistics uh, for, for multiple models. Then we are going to recognize uh, that within resampling correlation can impact uh, model uh, comparison. That is, if we are trying to compare a uh, different model, then we are going to look at how we can define a uh, practical effect size. Then we are going to what, compare models using different uh, differences in metrics. Then we are going to use uh, the tidy posterior to compare models using the Bereshian method. So uh, that is uh, basically uh, the learning objective uh, for for this uh, chapter. So I want to just quickly say that uh, in case, uh, feel free to interrupt me at any point. Uh, so for the first uh, part, uh, I think they just, uh, because I'm still using a previous uh, cohort uh, note. So we have a simple model where we have my cool model and then we collect uh, the metrics, which we say summarize equals uh, to false. And then we filter for some uh, specific metrics in which we might be interested in. For in this case, they were looking at the R square value. And then they did select the ID, the MyCool uh, model. That is the, the rename, the estimate uh, column uh, to be my cool model. So they also have, uh, they can also repeat uh, the step uh, for different by doing some inner join where they are going to bind different uh, rows uh, of different model uh, together here yeah, they are binding inner join uh, my other my other model r square and then they said inner join my other model uh, uh, r square so so that is uh, basically what they have for year for year they will now go over into uh, using uh, this uh, workflows uh, sets. Uh, which is a function which uh, we have learned about. We have covered this in the chapter when we're discussing uh, chapter seven of the book. So they use uh, the work uh, flow sets uh, to bind uh, different model into a different uh, pre-processing uh, steps. So here they have uh, the workflow sets, then the pre-processing steps. So they say it has to be a list. And uh, within uh, this list, uh, the passing basic recipe, uh, interaction recipe and also the spline recipe. And then the model, the model is going to be passing as a list, which is a LM underscore model. Then they say the cross, uh, uh, it should be false. And then they now, uh, they now retrieve, uh, they, they now use a, a, a function, which is just similar to what we have uh, uh, in the poor, which is the workflow uh, map. Uh, within this workflow map, uh, the function in which they pass in is a fit resample because they want to re be able to what resample uh, this. They want to pass in the fit resample. It's going to perform all the resampling. Then the seed was set, uh, which is a random seed, 1101. Then verbose is set to true because when we set uh, the verbose to true, it's going to show us how this model is run, the various step in which the model is going through. Then uh, they say resamples, which is MS fold, which is the fold in which we create. Then we say control is equals to what keep uh, predicted. This is also going to retrieve all uh, the predicted value. Then for the last step, uh, we because we have fit the model, we need to evaluate uh, those model. The the uh, we have to use uh, the collect uh, metrics uh, function. This collect metrics, so we pass in the model and then we fit out for the specific metrics in which we are interested in. Uh, and in this case, they said uh, it should be the metrics R square. So if I go back uh, to R, if I go back to R, so let's see 
this. So this was my basic uh, recipe. This is the basic recipe. I retrieve all this uh, code from the book. Uh, this was for the interaction recipe. This was from the uh, spline recipe. So in the pre-processing steps, so we just say uh, basic is equals to basic recipe, interact is equals to what interaction uh, recipe, and then we have spline is equals to what spline recipe. So if I run that step, then we need to pass everything into workflow sets. Uh, we have pre-processing, which is what we have, which is this object in which we have created. Then we have the model is going to be uh, the linear regression that is for linear regression uh, model. Then with the set cross to be false. And if I run evaluate this, then we can look at the model. So what we can see that the model we have workflow ID, we have the info, we have the option, and also uh, we also we also have uh, the results. So I will come back uh, to this when I'm talking about uh, resampling with workflow map. So in order for us uh, to resample with the workflow map, I set the seed. Then I'm using the V-fold cross validation, whereby I pass in the train AMS train data set. Then V should be tenfold. That is, is going to ensure we have tenfold. So when we check to see how many fold do we have, we can see that we have fold one, fold two, and we can have uh, we have the the assessment set, uh, which is two thousand. Uh, 107, then we have uh, the evaluation set. So, so we, we also have the assessment set. We also have the evaluation set, just like a follow-up uh, to our discussion uh, last week, uh, Tuesday. So we now have to use oh, the- Oh, oh Fami, uh, I'm sorry, oh. sorry to interrupt you. Have, you. have you switched windows perhaps? Um, because we're oh, still- sorry. Uh, oh, um, yeah, I was, I yes. was wondering, but I was looking I am sorry. at- <laughs> I am sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me stop sharing. I did not, I was thinking I shared my entire screen. I did not know I shared a specific. Yeah, you are seeing my house studio now. Yes, perfect. Okay, great, thank you. So let me, let me start. I was thinking I shared my entire screen. I did not know I shared a specific. So I was thinking everything. Let me start from there. I was starting from here. Uh, I'm just wondering, right, about... before, before you start, is that the same, the recipe is the one that we're using on the chapters, right? You're not using different modeling, right? Is, is that... that the one on chapter 11? It's the same, right? Uh, let me see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, then I can just refer to the results from the book, yeah. Thank you. Yes, yes. I got all from the book. It's from the book. I got all the uh, code from the book. So, okay, I was talking about a resampling. Where did I start? Yeah, I did not want to run. I've already run some of the code, so I don't want to waste time much. Yeah, I am here. Okay, there were some, okay, these are the pre-processing step, AMS recipe, uh, linear model. This is the linear model. We pass it into a workflow. I've done this. I've done the, okay, random forest model, random forest workflow. I've explained this. I mean, the, okay, this is for the cross validation step. So in this case, I said we need 10 fold cross validation. So when we check, we can see that we have 10, we have, 2,107 uh, rows of data points uh, will be used as our assessment set, while 235 will be used to evaluate uh, how well uh, the model is uh, performing. Then we use the control resample. And uh, within this control resample, we want to save all the predicted value we set it to be true. And we want to save all the workflow we set it uh, to be true. So when I run this line, we can see that we have keep the predicted. It's a grid of resample control objects. So we also set a seed. Uh, this is for the random forest uh, results. So we have random forest workflow. 
and then I fit I fit the resample. Then I say resample should be Ames fold. So which is what we have uh, defined here, which is a tenfold cross validation. Then we say control. It should all skip all the predicted values. So when we execute that uh, random fallless result, we can view it, which would take uh, which would take some time because you need to. It would take some time to give me the results. So why that is still running? So this was just uh, the pre-processing step, basic recipe, which is a recipe. The, the pass in the formula and also the data, which is the AMS train. And then they, uh, they perform some uh, recipe, which is step log, step order, and also step dummy, which is for all the nominal uh, predictor. So the model has run. We can see that we have tenfold uh, cross-validation. We have all the metrics. We have all the nodes. And it has, since we set skip prediction to be true, uh, we have all the prediction. So this is for the basic recipe. Uh, this is for the interaction recipe, which is almost similar. OK, this, this is for the spline recipe. Then we need to now bring all these objects together uh, into pre-process, we need to pre-process this where we are going to bind everything uh, as a list where we say the basic, which is basic recipe, interaction, which is the interaction recipe. Then we have spline, which is also the, uh, the spline recipe. So when we have this, we have gotten our, our pre-processing steps. So these are the pre-processing steps, which is uh, going to run through. Then the next thing, is for us to use the workflow set. Within the workflow set, uh, we are going to pass in the pre-processing because this pre-processing, we have three different models in which we have pre-processed. Then for the model, we pass the model in as a list. And within this list, we specify that we are interested for in the linear regression model. So, and then we set cross to be false. So once uh, we execute this line, we can check for the model. So we can see that we have the workflow ID, we have the info, we also have the option and also uh, the results uh, for the model. So we sampling uh, with workflow map. This is just like we, just as they explained uh, in the book, this is just uh, uh, like we're using Paul, just like we're using Paul, we sampling with workflow map. Uh, we sampling with workflow map is just like we're using functional programming in Paul because uh, the function is similar. So we just need to pass in all those functions into our pre-processing model in which we have pre-processed. We just set a random seed. In this case, we are using uh, vfold CV. We pass in the AMS train. Then we say V should be 10 because we are interested in 10-fold uh, cross validation. So we check confirm that we have we have the split objects which shows both the assessment and validation states. We also have the ID which shows us the tenfold in which we have created. Then for the control we sample, uh, we say we need to save all the both the prediction and also the workflow. So once uh, we run the control, we can check the keep predicted object, you can see that it is a grid of resample control objects. So in that case, we need uh, to now proceed into the next step. They now proceed into the next step. They set a random seed, whereby they pass in the random forest uh, workflow for the random forest uh, model. So when they pass in the random forest as a workflow, then they are using fit resample because they need to fit in uh, the resample in which, uh, and for the resample, the resample should be on the AMS fold, because if you look at the AMS fold, we can see that we have just splits and ID, because we want for each fold, we want to pass in the resample. Then for the control, we need to uh, retrieve all the predicted value. We need to, that is why we say keep, uh, we keep predicted, so when we fit, uh, uh, the resample is going to take a while before that uh, code will return the uh, results.
It's going to compute. It's taking some time. So while it's taking some time, I can just switch back to the notes. Okay. I can just switch out to the node. This is where we have keep predicted. So this is the object. It's just going to show us uh, how the model is computing. It's going to show us uh, the steps it's taking. Uh, so when I say, when I call this, it's not going to give us uh, this object, which is shows that it's a, it's a resampling result. Uh, we have tenfold uh, cross validation. This is the split object. This is the ID. So the fit resampling, it has had the performance metrics. It has some nodes and these are the predicted uh, value. Then we can now begin to say, oh, I want to retrieve. We can retrieve all the, we can now retrieve all the uh, performance metrics. So when we look at the, the LM model, so we can say we have workflow ID, we have info, we have option and also results. Uh, we have basic LM, interaction LM, and spline LM. So the next step in which they discuss uh, is after fitting all this resampling, because if you, you check the other objects, we know we have the column for the metrics. So we need to retrieve uh, the performance uh, metrics from, from that metrics column. So the, that metrics column, it has both the root mean square error, it also has the R square value. But in this case, uh, we want to retrieve all the root mean square errors. So we filter for that specific metrics in which uh, we are interested in. So we have collect metrics, then we pass in the LM uh, models, and then we filter dot metrics, which is RMSC, which is for the root mean square error. So when we check that, we can see that, we can see, sorry, there is sampling. We can see that we have Where am I? Yeah, 11.1. It's not going. Filter metrics. Yeah, I think I am somewhere. Yeah, we can see that we have the RMSA and we have sample size, which is 10, 10 because we have 10 folds cross by, and we also have standard error. These are the main. This is the root mean uh, square error. So for they also proceed, they did uh, the same step by adding uh, the random forest models. They just say add as underscore workflow sets. They pass in the random forest model and then they bind the rows. They pass in the linear models uh, uh, models. So they combine they assign this uh, into the new object called four models. So if they see four models, we can have the random forest, we can have the basic LM, we can have interaction LM, we can have spline LM. So in this step, we can now visualize this, we can now visualize uh, this result uh, using ggplot2. So the first, they also load ggrepel. This is going to help us uh, to repel overlapping text. So they say the auto plots, uh, they pass in the four model, then the metrics in which they want to sh show is the R square. So the R square, that is what they use. Then for the jump text repel from the GG repel aesthetics, then they say label should be a workflow ID, then the notch X and also the notch the Y, then the legend of position, they remove uh, all the legends. So when we now look at uh, this, uh, we now this saw that, uh, that the random forest uh, model, it has, it will perform the other three uh, linear models. I think I, I think I have this code already. Auto plot. Auto plot. LM. Four models. Oh, I've not run that object. I think I thought I have it. I've not run so. Run. 
So let me proceed. I was thinking I have it up. Okay, so I don't know if up to this point, I don't know if there are any burning question before we proceed. Uh, for me, no, I think it, it was very clear. Um, and also I think that the code is very, uh, for me, it, it helps to see it in code and not, not only in book format. So thank you. Yes. Because when I was going through also the notes, I discovered oh, I have to go back to previous chapter and get all the code and put it in a script before I was able uh, to run the whole process again. Because some of those objects, they were all in the previous chapter. So for the next part, they were talking about uh, comparing resample performance uh, statistics. So this resampling uh, performance statistics, uh, uh, just like what we did, we have we have to collect metrics for the four models, summarize false, then we filter for all the R square value. This is we are going to retrieve all the R square value. Then they are using this. Then they select they select the workflow ID, the dot estimates, and also the ID. And then the pivots wider to spread uh, the column to be a wide from the long to a wide format. Uh, ID call is equals to ID. Then the names from, the names is coming from uh, workflow ID. Then the values is coming, all the values will be gotten from dot estimates. So when they now did uh, the correlation to see the relationship, uh, uh, and we're able to see that uh, there is high, uh, large within resample correlation because we can see the year we have 0 0.887, here we have 0 0.888. So the, uh, the correlation was, uh, it was very high, just as they said, but if they, if they now went uh, further uh, to visualize this uh, using, uh, using, using a line plot, we can see the basic LM, we can see the interaction, we can see the spline and also uh, the random uh, random forest model. And they also say that if, if the resample to resample effect was not real, there would not be a, any parallel line. So we can see that this line, there is a wide overlap. So those overlap, it shows uh, this resample in which we are trying to perform. Uh, it is in, in real sense, it is, it is real. So that is what uh, they explain here that there will not be any parallel overlap. We can see that within these two models, there is an overlap within this and this, uh, they were all overlap. So they now went further to look at the uh, R square wider and then they say width, uh, which is the core test. Then they use uh, the basic LM, spline LM, and then uh, they use uh, the tidy function. And this tidy function, within this tidy function, which is going to tidy, tidy this table into a table. Then they select estimates, then start with conf. So we now see that we have estimates of 0 0.997, uh, lower confidence and also higher confidence interval. We can see that the within a resample collation appears uh, to be real because we can see the confidence interval range from 0 0.987 uh, to 0 0.999, which is quite high. We can see that it is real. So for the, uh, for the next part, they were talking about a simple hypothesis test, uh, which is just for all these models, we have the predicted value, we have the model, we have X1, X2, X3, and also ID, which is for all the fold, uh, we are using for the model. Here they were just giving us an estimate that every model we, have, we are going to have uh, the response variable, then we are going to have our beta zero, which is the estimate of the mean R squared. Then we are going to have our beta one, is, which is a change of mean R squared when interaction are added to the basic linear uh, model. So they just gave us like a, a skeleton of the, of the model structure. So, but when they now 
check for when they now did uh, the uh, comparison, they, they use motet to look for the difference uh, between the spline LM and the basic LM. So they, and they, they assign that into a new uh, variable. So they said LM, which is a difference. Then we use tilde one, which is I think tilde one will mean the model will have an intercept uh, of one if I'm, yeah, it's going to have an intercept uh, uh, of one. And then the data in which we are using is compare LM. And then we use tidy confidence interval, we set it to true, and then we select estimates, p-value, start with confidence. So we can now see we have all the estimates of the model. We have uh, the p-value, we have the lower confidence interval, and also uh, we have the higher confidence uh, interval. But they said alternatively, we can use a petty test we can use a PET test uh, to also achieve this. We can see that we also have the same estimates. Uh, we also have the same p-value, and we also have uh, the same value uh, for the confidence uh, interval for the model when we use uh, the t-test. Uh, for, for the last part, I think I will go back uh, to the notes. They were talking about, uh, talk about this, the Bayesian. They were talking about uh, the Bayesian uh, model. So in that case, they were using this new package, which is uh, tidy posterior. And they are using the Alstan arm package, which is a package in which we can use uh, to do for Bayesian uh, modeling. So here we are, we are still using our AMS pole and then the band call, the R square estimates, and then arrange ID, and then the select, the select every other column in the data except the ID, and then they are using the performance underscore model, which is coming from the tidy posterior package. So in that case, they specify. Uh, the posterior intercept, which will be students underscore T, which is degree of freedom of one. Then the chains is going to be four. The number of iteration is going to be 5,000. The seed was two. And then the contrast underscore model. For the contrast underscore model, they say with splines, which is list one, list two is no spline. Then the seed is set uh, to 36. So this is just to retrieve the summary of the model R square diff, the size to be uh, 0 0.2. And then the select contrast and all the other things that start with fracts. So we can say we have the contrast, fracts negative, fract equivalent, fract uh, positive. So, so this, uh, model, this, is, this model is going to take a while uh, before uh, we are going to get uh, the final output because it's going to perform a lot of tasks, a lot of iterations in which the Bayesian model is going to uh, perform uh, before we get our final results. Though because of time, I will not uh, want to show that for this. So I think uh, that is everything in which I was able to learn. Uh, Thank you very much. Claps. <laughs> um, uh, I, I think um, for me, I think the most unclear part, uh, which you helped a bit, but it's still somewhat unclear for me, is the how they advise to handle the, um, the within resembles variation. Um, uh, I can't remember in specifically which part of the the chapter. Check it out in a second. Um, I just have a very quick question. Sorry if I'm asking a very silly one. Yeah, sure. Like the okay. correlations, right? When you're running the multiple borders, you had 
the correlation. And you mentioned that when we were running the four models, the correlation was quite high. So actually, is this a problematic? Because um, obviously, they are all linear model. So I would expect the basic interact and the spline linear model, they will have very high intercorrelation compared yes. to with random forest. But is there really a threshold on determining what is considered a high or what is considered a low? I think uh, there is supposed to be a threshold where we can specify this. There was a paper in which I have read, but it's a while now. I think there is a threshold, there is a threshold where we can say, if it is between this number to this number, this is high, this is moderate, this is low. But for this, I, I guess this one is almost closer to one, which is 0 0.88 or 0 0.889 is very close to one. So I think we can consider this correlation as very high. Mm. I don't know if. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. No, I don't know if you have further comments or inputs. That is why. Um, my question is on a similar subject, uh, like uh, mailing. Um, uh, I've seen like how they define the variance and covariance, um, but and and they say that um, a high correlation might uh, bias the the model oh. towards finding no differences. This I understood, but then um, I'm not sure um, what to do with it. Um, like, how does the um, the following parts of the chapter deal with this potential issue? Like, what what is the connection between the the following parts of the chapter and the possibility of bias? Um, if any of you understood this, then it would be helpful. Uh, what I can get from you, you were saying, if uh, the correlation is high, if it is high, so what would be the advice in that case? If I can yeah, get- Yeah, exactly, that. exactly. How to handle this uh, situation? Because they say that um, it, it, it has the potential to bias our model uh, comparisons. So yeah, what's the advi advice or best practice to handle this uh, situation? Uh, for me, I don't have reply for that. I believe that will be what we are going to look at in the next mm -hmm. chapter, which is model tuning and the dangers of overfitting. I think that is the answer to that question is supposed to be in the next chapter when we are looking at how to tune those models. Yeah, just to add on on the covariance part, I was also looking at that paragraph they're talking about there's a significant positive covariance. Then they'll say it will be critically underpowered. So I was wondering because the sample size is quite huge, is that still a underpowered study? where even though the differences, we did find a differences, let's say between the two models, any of the two models, but we have quite a huge sample size because they say, according to them, it seems to be still underpowered, even though we have a huge sample size. So I'm just questioning like, then what would be the appropriate sample size? Like, because even though you get a statistical different test significant results of the differences is still critically underpowered. Uh, oh, but they, they did mention it will come in the next two sections. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one, I think is interesting talking about the practical effect size, right? So what they selected is like 2%, 0.02%. For me, right, I feel that is a very small effect size. But I also agree with what they are saying is like the effect, practical significance of the effect size is very subjective. So it really depends on the kind of research that you're doing, the kind of modeling job work that you're doing. 
like 0 0.02 effect size could be very large, let's say in a medical, let's say a drug testing kind of case. Yes. Where 0 yes, 0.02 yes. is like very huge. But maybe for other like psychology, like behavior, 0 0.02 would be considered a very, very small effect because for us, like that doesn't make really make a difference. So I agree that you really is have to look at which research area you're looking at. Mm. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's not all just a research area, as you're saying, but also on specific context. For example, if you're dealing with uh, like, I don't know, like sales data, and you have the option to go to your CEO and say, I can increase sales or profits by 1%, I think they'll be pretty happy, you know? So, so mm. it, and it's also like kind of cognitive psychology um, kind of thing, you know, like A-B testing or, or whatever, um, like a behavioral, um, uh, behavioral research. So, um, so it's also in, um, just context specific, I think. Mm. I don't really have much comment about the Bayesian because I don't do a lot of Bayesian statistics. So if anyone else wants to comment on that, feel free to do so. Um, yeah, I, I, as I said, also for me, it was like a kind of like a blind spot in the chapter. Mm. Maybe uh, next week, if Federica come, I think she can throw more lights on the Bayesian before we proceed. Okay. Um, do you have any more thoughts or notes? Freya, maybe you have something in the chat or um, audio? She says she is in the uh, office that she cannot call. Maybe she is busy. Yeah, probably. Okay, yeah, nothing specific. Um, okay, so uh, Olu Femi, would you like to, to conclude? Yes, uh, let's see. So looking at the last part, okay, this is for the Bayesian. Okay, we have seen this. Okay, to conclude this uh, step, so once uh, the non visualize the, the non visualize uh, the non visualize all this model, we can see that the random forest uh, model, we can see the distribution, we can look, see, also see the basic uh, linear model, interaction model, and also uh, the spline model. We can see that the random forest model uh, yeah, performed the other uh, three models. We can see it uh, clearly. Then if they, they also went further uh, to do the auto plots, so we can see the random forest, the spline, interaction, um, basic LM. We can see that the best model followed by the spline, followed by an interaction LM before, uh, uh, before we get uh, to, to this. Uh, this one is just showing when we say the, the difference in the R square, we convert it to table and then we visualize it where we put the difference in the x-axis, then zoom V-line, which will show the, uh, this uh, vertical line, then zoom histogram, which is going to give us uh, the distribution. Uh, and we can see that the posterior shows that the center of the distribution is greater than zero, so that the, the, the center of this is always, uh, is always, uh, it always uh, greater than uh, zero. So we can also, summarize this, then we select all these, uh, all that use the select helper function. Every other thing that do not start with practical. So we have the probability, we have the mean, we have the lower, we have the upper, and also the the, sum, the size, which is uh, zero. Uh, what uh, they are doing here is also similar. Here the size, they use uh, 0 0.02, which is uh, uh, fairly, uh, uh, small, so 
uh, they did the auto plots for the R square and over. So for the auto plots, we can see that uh, this one was the best model. So we can see that this other two model, we can see that the random forest model outperformed this other uh, this other three model. So they, they, they also look at uh, the effects of the amounts of resampling. So for, the, for, for this, they use the intervals. Though I, 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 I was unable to run this because I did not know where they got these intervals objects from. So they now plot the resamples in the x-axis, they map the mean to the y-axis, uh, they use jump paths, they use a uh, jump ribbon, a static y minimum, which will be lower, y maximum, which will be upper uh, interval, then field should be red, then alpha should be 0 0.1. So once uh, they visualize uh, this, we can see the confidence uh, interval, we can see the number of resample, uh, and we can see the confidence, the, the width of the interval decreases as more resamples are, are added. So as the, as the width uh, of this interval drop, so we, they are adding more resample uh, is going in uh, into the model. So I think uh, that is uh, basically uh, uh, the last part of the book because the chapter mainly it describes a formal statistical method for testing difference in performance between models. Uh, so we can have different type of models. So we need to know that we need to use a uh, different statistical approach in order for us to compare uh, the performance, how the model is uh, doing. So that is uh, basically uh, the summary of the chapter. So the next week we'll be looking at uh, model tuning and the dangers of overfitting, which is, uh, what we'll be discussing on, which is which was going to what build our knowledge based on this uh, two chapter in which we learned last week and also this week. Yes. Yeah, so next, so thank you, Olufemi. Um, next week I will be presenting the chapter. Yes. So I think I can put stop in the charts. Yes. Yeah. So I can stop the is recording. It is stop. Can you, and stop? Okay. Just to make sure I'll 